Okay, here we go. Podcasting from Washington, D.C., the heart engine of the entire world. This is Stacey J. Sounding Off, a weekly podcast about a single woman's journey to finding and keeping her happy in a world that idolizes marriage and caters to twos. Hosted by the smart, sassy, and unapologetically candid Stacey J. Johnson. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi, Justina. Hi, Stacey. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm perfect, honey. What's new in your world? Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, I have clients that I coach. Mm -hmm. And this one lady, she's been dating this guy for, like, maybe eight months. Okay. And, you know, I always say, ladies, you can hold on to the cookies, honey. You don't (laughs) have to get the cookies away until it's really something that you know that you're sure of. Yeah. At least for now that is. 75% 75% of what you want. Right. Girl, well, she has made the choice hmm. to, of course, they've been monog- They've known each other. She went, took him through the multiple dating thing. Okay. She chose him. Okay. They've been dating now. They've been knowing each other for longer, but they've been dating now for like seven months. Mm-hmm. And she has all of his mind and attention, honey, oh. just like, see, these girls that listen to me, <laughs> they don't know. They I don't know. Just they just got to listen. So I am just so proud of her. And she recently, honestly, she just shared this with me not too mm-hmm. long ago. And it, I just want to tell y'all to hold on to the cookies. Yes. The cookies, let me tell y'all something. If you don't give him the cookies and he leaves <laughs> you because of that, he's a boy. Yeah. Because any man, just because you're not giving the cookies don't mean that he ain't getting the cookies <laughs> from somebody else. And guess what? During the dating process, that's yeah. okay. Yeah. If he wants to do that. Mm-hmm. But he ain't getting none of cheese cookies. You got that right. These cookies are... <laughs> Holding on. Gourmet cookies. Gourmet cookies. We're going to hold on. <laughs> so I'm so happy. I can't say her name, of course, because she killed me. But, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy that she did exactly what I said. I mean, they kissed and talked to her, but this yeah. was after they got into that part of the relationship. She's done everything that I said. And guess what? You know, you just never know. Oh, they may be. Happy, this yeah. will be my first married couple. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right. Speak at the wedding. Yes, I will. Oh, my God. What yes. did I say? OK, anyway. <laughs> so coming up on Single Girls Talk, we have Don Masler. Okay. Yeah. PhD. Ooh. She's no. First of all, she's so cute and she's so tiny oh. and she's so dope. But she is one of our girl masterminds and she is going to she's talking for Single Girls Talk, but she is a mastermind okay. and she is going to talk about the science of love, oh. which should really honestly, ladies, knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. When you learn about what this serotonin, dopamine and all that stuff is yes. doing all that time when you talk about, oh, I like him. Oh, I like it to know what is really going on. Yeah. Y'all, that's some power. So hopefully knowledge is power and y'all going to say, oh, child, I'm lusting after him because that's just that serotonin. (laughs) Anyway, okay, up next, Don Bassler, Science of Love. Hey, everybody, it's Stacey J. And, oh, my God, I'm so excited. During Single Girls Talk today, we have an amazing, an amazing person on the phone today, and her name is Dawn Masler. And Dawn Masler, I'm sorry, she has a master's of science. So because (laughs) it's so good to say that and because of what we're going to be talking about today, which is the biology of love. And I'm going to get a little bit into her um, bio. She is a two-time TEDx speaker. I can tell you I've watched her TEDx, and I was floored because I never thought of science having anything to do with why I'm in love with anyone. But um, I should have known the brain was doing something. But she's a two-time TEDx speaker, appearing at TEDx Boca Raton 2016 on how your brain falls in love. And And um, she did another one in 2016, Falling In versus Staying in Love. She was voted one of the top 20 most followed dating experts on Twitter and best 28 dating marriage and relationship blogs in the U.K. to follow in 2015. Her work has been featured on South Florida Today, Miami Herald, and she's everywhere, NPR. Her book is titled, love this title, ladies, check this out, Men Chase, Women Choose. The Neuroscience of Meeting, Dating, Losing Your Mind, and Finding True Love. Her latest endeavor is called the Devotion Test. It's an instant test that can show love and commitment in a man. So, hi. Welcome, Dawn. How are you today? I'm great, Stacey. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Let's start with the TEDx talk. Okay. So, how we fall in love is for women, there is a buildup for both of us. 
there's a buildup of neurotransmitters and they build up to they reach a tipping point. And when they reach that tipping point, we fall in love. So it's, it's actually kind of ironic that we call it falling in love because there is actually like a chemical fall. A, like a, we kinda, it's almost like a roller coaster. You go tick, 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 up, up to the top and then wee down you fall in love. So the two general neurotransmitters that build up for women are dopamine and oxytocin. And the one for men is dopamine and vasopressin. Now, dopamine occurs in both of them. And dopamine is that neurotransmitter of wanting, of desire, of, of really happiness, too. It's, it's the one that keeps you coming back. It's that, it's that good feeling you get when you play Candy Crush and you want more of it. You know, it's, that, that's what dopamine is. When you, when you go out on a date and you want to see him again, that's dopamine. Mm, got it. So for women, it's dopamine and oxytocin. Oxytocin is the bonding hormone. We get that when you kiss cuddle, caress, talk to them. You can get it on social media. Every time they call, every time they text you, you get a little dopamine. But you can get a huge amount of dopamine when you have an orgasm. So the interesting thing is that women are more likely to fall in love once she becomes sexual. Got now it. here's Or here, think that we're in love once we become sexual. Well, actually, you can fall in love. You fall oh, wow. in, that's what builds up to fall in love. So, and you can fall in, you don't have to become sexual to fall in love. You can actually, you don't even have to meet the guy to fall in love. You can fall in love over social media if you build up enough oxytocin. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. So, and, that's, that, and that's part of the reasons why some women can get scammed online. Mm. Because if the, guy, if the guy works enough to like build up the oxytocin, then when she falls in love, and I'll explain what, how parts of your brain shut down, important parts of your brain that would keep you from being scammed shut down. So that's, that's why that can happen sometimes. Guys can fall in love too and be scammed. So it's not, you know, it's not just women. Um, but guys fall in love differently. But guys fall in love, again, dopamine when he's excited. And then vasopressin. And vasopressin increases when he's sexually attracted to someone, but, the, but actually goes away quickly at orgasm. So, in other words, he, <laughs> he, he's less likely to fall in love after they, you have a sexual relationship. Really? So, ladies, you hear that? He's less likely. I always tell people, hold out, hold out. And now I really have a, 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 a reason to, to even honestly, Dawn, I'll probably use you in all my talks moving forward because it's like, no, <laughs> this is documented. Yes. This is not just anything yes. I'm saying. Say that one more time, ladies, uh, Dawn, so they can really, really get that in their minds. So the buildup for a man to fall in love is dopamine and vasopressin. Vasopressin increases when he's sexually excited, but rapidly decreases at orgasm. So in other words, you, need, you want him to get him excited, but you kind of want him to marinate, it in, marinate in it for a while. Exactly. So ladies, let him marinate, please. Because so many women say, Stacey, I don't understand. After we had sex, it just he totally changed. Now you know why. Yeah, and, and, and dopamine, actually, there's something called the Coolidge effect with dopamine where it can go up and down rapidly when he's satiated. And we can take a bunch of rats and throw them in a, in a box, with a, or we can take a bunch of female rats, throw a male rat in. He'll have sex with all the females, and he'll lie in the corner. They can lick and try to entice him, and he won't do anything. He'll just lay there. His dopamine will be low unless I put a new female in. And then his dopamine shoots back up, and he's up and at him. And that's so then knowing all effect. of that information, how do we then get him to fall in love? Like how do we well, position ourselves? Because I always believe in strategy and, you know, positioning. So how do we, if knowing all of that, the only thing I can say is just ladies don't have sex so quickly. That's one thing because we want to keep him interested and we want to keep right. him, and, um, right? Yes, and do you want the secret? Yes, I want the secret. Please, Don, tell us. <laughs> Here's the crazy, wild secret. It turns out when a man asks a woman for a commitment, for exclusivity, when he makes the commitment, that can cause the biological shift for him to fall in love. Just in the causes, question or in her answer? Well, yes, she accepts. But when really? a man commits to a woman, it causes the downshifting of his testosterone, which appears to be the precipitating cause for him to fall in love. So when he falls in love, ladies, and he asks you for, well, this is how you know you're in, he's in love. He's going to ask for a commitment because, honestly, you're exactly right. Men don't usually ask for a commitment unless they're at a place 
where they are sure that they want to make that commitment. And I'm talking about good guys, ladies. We all know there's a couple of different kind of guys out there. So, But I'm talking about your good guys. When they're ready to fall in love or when they are in love, they're going to ask for the commitment. Right, and there should be a hesitation, too. So, you know, a lot of times women will, like, push for that. There should be a hesitation because you're going to have a downshift in his testosterone. So that's a big, that's a big physiological change. So you, there should be a slight hesitation. He should not be running into this. So if the guy's asking for a commitment on the second date, that's a red flag. Mm. That's, that means he's probably not being truly, completely honest. He's, you know, he's, he's already saying, I love you, and you just met. Mm-mm. Got it. So what are some other red flags we should look for? Um, well, if, if he, if he dances around the issue, like if he says, I only have eyes for you without actually asking for the commitment. Oh, you know, you're the only one. Got it. So would you say a man that is, and these are for women who are in committed relationships and they've been in this committed relationship for three, four, five years or some, you know, just this extremely long amount of time and the guy always talks about getting married, and he's interested in getting married, but really pulling the trigger and asking her for her hand is pretty well, that's not different. happening, or it hasn't happened. Well, that's different. So maybe, maybe we should continue, because there's a, there's a big thing. This is just falling in love. So falling in love is, and it's really, falling in love is very different from, uh, this, so we're building up the neurotransmitters to fall in love. Then we're going to fall in love. And then we can have long-term love. So let's talk about falling in love. Falling in okay, love, and yes. you had asked about like the six different things that really happen. There's actually more than six. Oh, wow. One of the th- first, so we, we see this total neurotransmitter upheaval. So one of the first things we see is the, the serotonin, the hormone of happiness. When you want, would you like to guess if it goes up or down when you fall in love? It goes down because I'm so scared I'm falling in love. Yeah, it goes down. It's not because you're yeah, scared. I could, I mean, it goes because, down. Yeah, because I'm scared. It's like, oh, my God, what's happening? <laughs> I, I don't know if this is going to feel good is what I'm probably thinking. No, it, what it does is it drops to the level of someone with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. That's why you're so obsessed when you fall in love because your serotonin level drops. At the same time, your cortisol level skyrockets. That's your stress hormone. So you can't eat, you can't sleep, and you so you're constantly wanting to be on the phone and talking to it because of the, anxi- the high anxiety that you feel. You're also, your ox- oxytocin increases in both of them, and because the guy's testosterone drops, his, now he's more affected by oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. So you want to be around each other. You want to touch and kiss and cuddle. You know the couples where you're like, they're all cuddly, and you're like, get a room, will you? You know, that, that, that time uh-huh, period uh-huh, of what's... Uh-huh. So that those are some of the neurotransmitters, and at the same time, we see uh, a shut a, break, a shutdown of some of the parts of the brain. One of the main parts of the brain that shut down is the prefrontal cortex. That's the thinking part of your brain. That's why the women and men can get scammed, you know, because their their thinking part of the brain is no longer working as well. You lose cognitive ability when you fall in love, but that's not all you also lose part of your ventral medial prefrontal cortex. That's the part of the brain that judges the other person. That's why they say love is blind. It's also the reason why your girlfriends are going, girl, what are you doing with that guy? And you're like, what do you mean? Isn't he wonderful? And you can't see it. Your friends can tell you all day long there's something wrong with them, but you can't see it because you fell in love. Your ventral medial prefrontal cortex is not working properly. In addition, you lose a part of your brain called the amygdala. The amygdala is what sounds the alarm. So even if you notice there's something wrong, you look in his trunk, you see a sawed-off shotgun and a ski mask, it doesn't register as being a problem. You know, you're like, oh, he's doing winter deer hunting. It's not a big deal. Because the part of your brain that should be creating the anxiety is offline. So, okay, so, Don, this is kind of scary. Because, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm really serious. I know my listeners are like, okay, Stacy, okay, we know we want to get – information because we want to create our own roadmap. But now you're leading me into the roadmap of maybe I don't want to fall in love <laughs> because how, no, you we can't love avoid any of love. those things. Say that again? No, I think we love it. We love this. We love this. One of, the, one of the other things that happens is that we see a deactivation of your right hemisphere, the same deactivation we see with people that are on cocaine. So it, we're all like hopped up. It, love feels great. We feel euphoric. We have endorphins kicking in. That's why we all love love. And the thing is, Mother Nature's doing this for a reason. 
and it's not and a bad what reason. reason? She, what is that reason? She's lower. She's lowering your defenses so you can get close to another person. You're getting to know the other person without having your being very defensive because being close to someone is actually unnatural. Um, it's very scary. So what she's doing is she's kind of setting you in a position of optimal con- closeness for a given time period. Now, this only lasts between one and three years. The average is two years. So, you so may, what does you it may, last between, only last between one and three years? The deactivation of your brain in the upheaval of your cortisol. So after about two years, one day you wake up and you go, you notice that he's snoring or that he smacks his lips when he eats and you never noticed that before because now critical judgment returns and you start noticing things that you didn't like before and they become annoying. Have you ever been there? So yes. So let me be clear. Okay, ladies. So let me be clear. So when you fall in love, this thing that happens in your brain is going to take one to three years. Then after yes. that stops, because you're in love, mm-hmm. you have now fallen in love. It's not the act of you're falling. Now you've fallen in love. And after you fall, fall in love, falling, wake falling up in and love you is, hear him snore, and it's like, oh, my God, he snores. Mm-hmm. Falling in love is about, is about one to three years. That's the actual uh, mechanism of falling in love. And then once you get past that two-year mark, you know, average two-year mark, then mm-hmm. love becomes – there's a saying that says some love begins as a feeling and it becomes a decision. That's where the decision comes. You decide at that point if you're going to practice loving, being loving. And now the weird part is now we see act, the activities in the part of the brain that was formerly shut down. So now we wow. see the love is actually in the thinking part of the brain. So you can actually think your way into a loving relationship and you start Got practicing it. So this it. is still a little scary, Donna. Let me tell you why. And I know it, okay. it, it just is because you've spent one to three years falling in love with this guy, right? And it's just mm-hmm. so blissful mm-hmm. when you're in and out of all of these things that are happening in your brain. Then you wake up and you've fallen in love and then it's like, oh my gosh, now I'm, now I'm back to my thinking part and now I have to, after three years, with this gentleman, now I yep. have to, or, or this partner, now I have to really decide, Ooh, is this what I want? Because now exactly. my thinking part of my brain is back, correct? And then yes, what happens it's not in a that scary, thinking part? It's not as scary as you think, though, because if you understand this, you're going to make better decisions way before you fall in love. So now you understand uh-huh. that sexual activity is more likely to make you fall in love. So you're going to hold off with the sexual activity and you're going to date this guy long enough to realize if this is somebody you really want to be in a relationship with before you allow the whole process to begin. Aha. Uh-huh. Now there, that's where I want to, okay. Now I'm back in, in love with falling in love. <laughs> because at first I'm like, oh my God, this is so much information. I don't think I want anyone to ever fall in love again if I have to go through this. Okay, so now... You, the time, you, so you're taking the time, okay, I love it. Okay, so now we've fallen in love, and I'm thinking again, and I'm noticing mm-hmm. he's snoring, and then I'm take me from there. Absolutely, I get you now. Okay, so now what do you do? Well, this is where researchers looked at every characteristics, or all, 40 different characteristics of people in long-term relationships, and they wanted to find out what they had in common. And out of 40 different characteristics, they only had one thing in common. And that was the ability to maintain positive illusions of the other. In other words, they picked and choose what they decided to focus on in their partner. And they decided to focus on things that they liked about the partner. And that's what gave them a long-term happy relationship. And every time you practice love, we see activity in part of the brain that's called the perioctoductal gray area. That's, a, that's rich in opioid receptors. And what that gives you is that ah oh, feeling, that, like, that uh, relaxed, that tranquil feeling of feeling of being in long-term love. And it gives you that bliss that um, it actually people that are in long-term relationships, men will live 250% longer than their single counterparts, and women will live 50% longer than their, their single counterparts. It's a healthy, nurturing. Say that one nurturing. more time because that is <laughs> – so that just took me over. Men will say that one more time. Ladies, I hope you're listening. Men, okay. will, men in happy long-term relationships will live two and a half, or 250% longer than their single counterparts, 
and women will live 50% longer than their single counterparts. Wow. Why in men 250, do you think? I think it's mostly because it's the nurturing aspect. Men have a, um, a natural propensity for stress, and love gives them a natural buffer to stress. So if their stress builds up too much, then they end up having heart issues. And oftentimes they'll have a heart attack relatively young. But a, a guy that has the buffering effect of love, and particularly the, um, the pain relief effect of the opioid receptors, is going to be, or not even pain relieving, but like a mellowing effect of the opioid receptors is going to live longer. But then women, with women, is, women it's only 50%. So we, because we're carrying most of his weight, is it that is that the strength of a woman? I want to believe, but what, what is it really, though? Uh, women tend to to uh, estrogen is, tends to be protective of the heart anyway, so mm-hmm. it's probably less likely that she's going to have the ravages of stress normally. So she's going to have less likely um, to have that effect. Also, women tend to it's there seems to be an effect when it comes to like oxytocin with women. And women don't necessarily get it just from a relationship. Women can get it from the village. She can have girlfriends. She can have children. She can have family members. So she gets love from a lot of different places where men tend to just kind of get it singularly from their partner. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, so now we've fallen in love. And now Mm -hmm. now we've made the decision to be there. And, ladies, what I love about this is, the information that she just shared with what your brain, what happens to your brain when you're going through this whole falling, use that information to guide you and to say, do I want to continue to fall or do I want to stop and put my brakes on this because we are not compatible, <laughs> you know, because in that somewhere you're, you're finding out about his values and what he needs and what you need and if those things go together. And remember what we talk about, the non-starters versus your preferences and things like that. You're asking yourself all these questions along this one to three years because then you may not even get to the second year First of all, well, no, 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 no. Actually, you no, need no, no. to ask, once you've fallen in love, you, it's hard to stop that ball from going. You need to ask these questions way in the beginning. We're talking month one, first month, two months, three months. This is where you really need to investigate this. Once you become sexual, you're more likely to fall in love. That's when your brain's going to deactivate. Got it. That's what I needed. Okay, ladies, so your brain deactivates when you have sex. So do like I always say and keep those legs closed. Okay. <laughs> just, just follow. Just keep it real simple. Keep those legs closed. Okay. It's not. I, I mean, it doesn't happen 100% of the time. I, I, I what doesn't happen 100% of the time? Uh, for just having sex. Some women don't fall in love when they have sex, particularly women that have had past trauma. Um, but that's – so I, I just wanted to preface that because – some people get upset. They're like, wait, if I have sex, you're telling me my brain's going to deactivate. It's like, no, not necessarily because you have to have both the dopamine and the oxytocin. You have to be excited in the relationship too. Got it. So Got anyway. It. Oh, my gosh. This has been such an amazing conversation with Don. Okay, so you guys listening, guys and girls listening, I had to break this up into two parts because we were talking for 40 minutes, okay? So this is what I need you guys to do. Of course, this is part one that you just listened to, and it's the brain sex and falling in love is going to be the title of this talk. Now, if you want to hear the next talk, which will be Dawn on the brain sex and dating, please listen to episode five. It's going to blow your mind. Trust me. Yeah. If you thought this one was good, Make sure you listen to Stacey J. Sounding Off, Episode 5. All right, guys, so up next is one of my favorite segments, and it's called Ask Ask Stacey J. reason why I love this segment is because, guess what? I get to really do what I love to do, and that means speak directly to our listeners and answer their questions. Yeah, so, Justina, who do we have first? Yeah, so we have a girl that has been dating a guy for Mm -hmm. three months, and he is interested in her meeting his mom. She says, is it too soon to meet the mom? There's only been three months. They've been dating. Right, so have they? Uh, so it's two things. So if they have been consistently dating, mm-hmm. meaning they've been out six, seven times, mm-hmm. eight, ten times, you know what I'm saying? I would say two. What? What is it? Three months? Three months? Yeah. So that's four weeks in a month. Sometimes five. If they've been out, gosh, at least in one month, 
you know, six, seven times, yeah. that's a lot, you know, in over three months, then that's even more. Okay. So then if it, that's just one instance, if they have been dating a while and consistently seeing each other, mm -hmm. then I never am one to put timetables on anything. Okay. It's the individuals and how they feel about each other and if they've mm. been consistently dating. Now, if they have just been, he's popping up every now and then, mm -hmm. you know, I would, I would tend to think, and this is something with women, we think, girl, he want me to meet his mom. Right. Well, his mom to him just might be, I mean, not saying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like all men don't regard if I introduce you to my mother, that means that, hey. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I would think that first of all, in both instances, she needs to find out how he feels about his mom. Okay. You see what I'm saying? And the relationship they have. And hopefully if they were dating consistently, that has been a topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. Because then that will tell her who she is in his life. Okay. The other instance, and definitely go meet the mom. Okay. The other instance is, he could just be the guy, and if it hasn't been consistent, mm -hmm. he might re not regard an introduction to his mom as being something special. Yeah. You know? So ask him. Okay. Because she may then think oh wow he wants to introduce me to his mom and it's so early but he might be thinking whatever whatever it ain't it don't mean <laughs> nothing to me you yeah. know what i'm saying <laughs> all right well girl you got your answer so our next question is i've been in a long distance relationship for about six months stacy and it seems like we're at a plateau how do i keep the connection Wow, well, long distance relationships are really hard because really, what is six months really? How many times have you seen him? You know, mm -hmm. you could have only seen him six times in six months. So really, what is that? Right. You know, and then when she says plateaued, I think she is concentrating more on if that's the situation, the six months rather than the quality time they've spent together. Mm -hmm. And that would be key for me to answer the question. So keeping the connection at this point, if she's working that hard to keep the connection, first of all, I would challenge the relationship. Okay. Is she really in a long distance relationship mm. or is she just dating somebody long distance? Yeah, that's true. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times women confuse the distance and the time with girl, we've been, we in this long distance relationship for a year, but really are you just dating someone who has long, who is long distance? Mm. And he's not even the regarding, regarding it as a long distance relationship. So yeah. I would say that if you have it first off, have the conversation with him, with what type of relationship you have. Mm -hmm. And if in fact it is a long distance relationship and you guys are committed to each other, then I would think that eventually somebody is going to have to move to the other person. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To make it a real relationship to see if this thing is going to work. Okay. Okay. Keeping the connection. Honestly, we have technology. You know, mm -hmm. and honestly, keeping the connection should not just be from her end. That's real. Keeping the connection has to also be from him trying to keep the connection as well. That's it shouldn't all, all, always just be the female's effort. And if it is, that honestly tells you what type of relationship you get. Okay. That's true. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> all right, girl, you got your answer. <laughs> all right, y'all, that has been Ask Stacey J. Up next, just keep listening. We might have something special for you. Mm. Okay, everybody. Up next is our segment. It's Tea Time with Tina. And this is when Justina Girl, honey, mm, she brings all the entertainment and pop culture dating tea to Stacey J sounding off. Now, this is my messy part of the segment. So just know um, she's messy boots and I am petty. Okay, so Tina, <laughs> what do you have today? <laughs> So the tea I have this week, Stacey, is that Kevin Hart recently uh, posted a video on Instagram apologizing to his wife and his kids about a video that he took place in, um, and it was considered su sexually suggestive. So apparently he's being escorted by this woman who – apparently has a video with them and they're cuddled up and hugging and she threatened to release it. So he wanted to kind of do damage control before it actually mm -hmm. hit the blogs. So mm -hmm. they're expecting a new baby. Kevin Hart has had a former relationship with his ex-wife and that failed with divorce. 
and is this one headed to divorce? It's like, does he have a pattern? Is he not monogamous? I I don't um, know. What is your your takes on it? Well, I can tell you that yes, honey. I think everybody in the world has seen that video. It was it's had like five million views on it on Instagram. It's crazy oh insane. Yes, five million views. But you know, I have to say that first of all. I am saluting Kevin Hart for getting in front of it because a Mm. lot of times people think, you know, the best thing to do is get in front of it and just own it because, honey, there are some men out there that will not get in front of it at all. They'll try to stop Mm -hmm. it or they'll even say it wasn't me until they bring the video out. You know, some just lie after lie after lie. And I just salute Kevin Hart for just keeping it real. Like, this is what happened. It's an embarrassment to me. And I always say God puts us through certain things to get our attention. And, yes, maybe he did cheat on the first wife. And maybe they said that this wife is, was a mistress to the first wife when he was dating, you know, when he was married to her. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Okay. I do believe in karma. So maybe that's the karma. But I also believe, as far as Kevin Hart goes, that people can change. And maybe this is the time since somebody, you know, is trying to get into that pocketbook of his. You know, he might be like, whoa, let me stop this craziness. Or, I mean, at least he might have the next girl he cheats with sign an NDA because guess what? He getting in front of it again. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. I you know, so and that's the realest. That's the realest that it could ever get. <laughs> so yeah, I, mean, I hope it is everything. It is. Yeah, I hope everything works out with with Kevin Hart and his wife. And speaking of videos, Stacy. So the next one is Nicki Minaj and Nas apparently posted a video of them kissing and hugging and showing some serious PDA. So apparently they're a couple. I yeah. I don't know. Have you heard anything? Have you heard any juicy tea with that? Girl, I am so here for it. I have no commentary. Get it, <laughs> Nicki Minaj. I feel about that like I feel about Jennifer Lopez and her boo, honey. Get, get, get it. Get it, Nicki. Because Nas is some type of fine, honey. <laughs> He's some type of fine. And can I tell you, with all that fineness, he is very manly and all of that, honey. And he just looks like he might be the seriousness that we need Nikki to settle down with outside of yes. what is that safari thing that she was dating? Oh, that one my goodness. Time? Yes. Yeah. Girl, <laughs> please. That man's walking around with fur coats and no shirts on. Child, please sit down. Nikki got her a real man this time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> she ain't come to play this time. I'm here for Nicki Minaj and Nas. I think Nas is that New York snack that Nicki need in her life. Yes. So I'm here for it. Yes. I'm so here for it. <laughs> mm, get it, girl. Well, that's, that's it for the tea this week. Uh, find out some more tea with us next week on Tea Time with Tina. Oh, my God, Justina, this was so much fun. I have so much fun doing this show with you, girl. (laughs) I have so much fun doing this show with you, too. Oh, my goodness. Learning so much. (laughs) Yay. Well, that's what it's all about. You know, I always say, gosh, if I could have what I have now as far as the knowledge about creating healthy romantic relationships, if I would ha- would have had a me at 22, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm lucky I got you. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so this is the end of the show. Oh, my God. Yes. So we've talked about so much during the show, but... I want to bring in one of your Stacey-isms that I feel like subscribers need to know. Um, One of the things you mentioned is let go of desperation and insecurity about whether or not he's going to be the one. Stop worrying about whether or not he likes you and whether or not you're going to scare him away by saying or doing the wrong things. F the wrong things be you. That's one of my favorites. Oh, my gosh. Wow, Justina, let me tell you. It's so interesting because we do walk around trying to, nine times out of ten, decide if we are going to be right for him. Well, what we need to adjust in ourselves to be right for him. 
Well, no, you're perfect. You're per- perfect and wonderfully made. You don't change anything at your core. Make some adjustments because of relationships, but don't change anything of your core. Be you. You are enough. That's what I believe. So that's a great safetyism to pick. So yay, ladies, don't forget I that. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And also, ladies, you know, I always end the show with my single, my one million single women pledge, empowerment pledge, and it goes like this. I am a single woman. I am not desperate. I am not depressed. And I'm not just settling for any man who comes my way, no matter how many more women there are to men. I accept love in my life the right way, my way, from a man who deserves me. And, ladies, hopefully you'll really rewind that and play it over and over again. And if you can, go to my website, JustDateGirl.com, and you can get it from there. And, you know, write it down and put it in your memory bank. And then also shut, take a, write it down and put it in your purse and carry it with you because there's power in mantras. And I believe as a single woman, as you journey on this singlehood um, journey, there is power in that mantra. And I just say just take it with you and commit it to memory, and hopefully it will bless your life like it has blessed mine. And, of course, always remember, I am you. You are me. And we are one. Have an amazing day, single ladies, and uh, hopefully you'll be back and hear us next time. (laughs) All right. Bye, ladies. Oh, follow us on social media. You can follow me at JX Mogul, and you can find Miss Stacy J at Instagram, Stacy J. <laughs> yes, and that's S T A C I I J A E. All right, bye, ladies. That will conclude this evening's entertainment. It's time to go. What? Wait a minute. We're not going. Oh, yeah. Loved this episode of Stacy J sounding off? Head over to JustDateGirl.com and subscribe, rate, and leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or tune in from our web address. Don't forget to sign up to our newsletter to receive free giveaways and invites to Stacy J's events held across the country.